Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Uh, Rosenbach, I, I'm working on a piece of legislation right now that uh, I'm going to call Cyber Shield, and it's and it's with this idea because of the spread of the Internet of Things, whether it be an automobile, a toaster, you name it, they're all going to be vulnerable to hacking. And right now, the American public doesn't know how vulnerable they may be. So on cars, we've got here's your fuel economy sticker, here's the safety of the car sticker, uh, and so people can make a judgment. So what would you think about that idea that on, you know, uh, on a voluntary basis, but there it is, like kind of energy star, it's on the car, it's on the toaster. And it gives you kind of a one star through five star rating as to the level of security, cybersecurity, that has been built into that device. Uh, that would incentivize companies to kind of meet the highest standard as people get more concerned about it. Um, what would you think about that as an idea? Yes, sir, I, I'm a huge fan of creative ideas that allow people to understand the problem and facilitate the flow of information about cybersecurity. So I think that sounds good. In particular, if it's worked in conjunction with the private sector so that everyone understands right. how the evaluation would work, it seems like a good idea. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that, Mr. Harkins? You know, I think it's a great idea, and uh, I was smiling when you were saying that because a few years ago when I was at Intel as Chief Security and Privacy Officer, we had floated the idea of creating a security star rating. Um, it's an interesting concept, and I think one that has merit. I think it can be uh, practically hard to implement, though, because it would be like the miles per gallon, because the technology is evolving. There, there might be a deterioration of I the rating, that. and so how do you keep that up to date? But we'd have to figure it out. But yes, we would. The public needs has a right to know as well. Absolutely. Uh, do you agree with that, Mr. Groban? Uh, Senator, I, I would note a, a tone of caution. Uh, I think that there is a risk in that sort of approach in that even devices that were built with high levels of quality in their security architecture are still subject to have vulnerabilities in the future. And if having the five-star rating on a device at time of manufacture gives the user of that device the thought that it is going to be good, assuming I, I think that, it can lead uh, to Assuming that we issues. could do it with that caveat that, you know, over time it could erode, but just so it's 2014, here's the standard. I, 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 I just don't know if the general public is able to comprehend that level of intellect that even if they had a five-star rating when they bought the device, it still may become vulnerable in the future. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but one of the criteria would be whether or not the technology has a right, has an ability to alter to changing threats, too. That could also be up there, I, so that the public can understand that. Let me go to you, Mr. Gannison. Um, well, Senator, I, I find it's nuanced because I always think of the perspective of the small entrepreneur, that's the companies we back, and we, a lot of well-intentioned government regulations end up putting a lot more burden on small companies and the ability to innovate because those companies don't have expensive lawyers and they don't. Have I, I, this would just be voluntary. Um, and, I, and so I understand, Senator. And I would say that uh, I find that market-driven initiatives are better than government-driven. Right, driven but initiatives. If, if there is no right now, there's nothing. So the markets had, you know years to do something and they don't do anything. So in the substitution for that, you introduce something that's voluntary. So that would be my point. You, Mr. Barlow, quickly, please. So I, I think at the end of the day, what you need to do is hold manufacturers responsible for a few key things, right? When products ship, they need to ship not with default user IDs and passwords. We need to understand how the data that these devices collect, how it's being used, where it's being stored, what the security posture is around it. And we also have to recognize that these devices, I mean, how old is your computer, sir? It's probably only a year or two old, right? I mean, I've got a 10-year-old car. We've got to have the ability to update things. The thermostat that goes in your house might be there for 20 years. I got it. So I just have one more question. I just will say, this is actually going to give small companies a chance to stand out. Say, you know, we've got this new device. You can, you know, we're selling it, and the small companies could kind of just move it. So that would be a great venture capital entrepreneurial opportunity. And finally, it's on, it's on the question of uh, cybersecurity vulnerabilities directed to the... Uh, uh, you know, on the airlines, it's a huge issue now. We're reading more and more about it. Mr. Rosenbach, do you agree that the airline industry should share information about cybersecurity threats, attacks, and protections to the FAA and to other airlines when they're identified? Uh, yes, sir. In principle, 
informa more information sharing is better. Whether you, you want you, the FAA also, to be the, the nexus, I think you should work with the private sector to make sure that they're, they're up and able to do all that. But it, it, there are threats to the airlines, yeah. and it's very important to try to find some way to address those. And you also agree that the FAA should establish cybersecurity framework for aircraft and ground support equipment? Uh, th they should, as long as they do that with the private sector, too, exactly. so that it's you know exactly. within the technology that they work. Yeah, and that's the Cyber Air Act that uh, Senator Blumenthal and I have introduced so that we can figure out what that framework should be so that information gets shared. If there's a cyber attack on United, Americans should learn about it. The FAA should learn about it so all the vulnerabilities that might be identical would be shut down. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.